We're going to talk about sales forecasting now, and, and you'll see that, that in the handouts that accompany this program, uh, there, there's a preliminary budget, uh, there are some fo sales forecasting uh, spreadsheets, uh, all that stuff fairly easy to interpret. I don't need to spend a lot, of, a lot on that, but you'll see that there's a 12-month uh, sales forecast for Anna's uh, business, and it's a basic template. Um, you know, that basically says this is how many of each product she's going to sell per month, at what price, these are the costs, uh, this is how mon much money this is going to generate. Um, if you are counseling somebody through their business plan or if you're writing your own business plan, sit down and think about how many of these things, if I'm, if I'm making something or let's say, again, I am, uh, uh, I, I'm fixing cars. How many cars can I reasonably fix in a day? What's my average? Is it an hour? If I'm specializing in tune-ups, then it's sort of easy to predict that. It takes about an hour to tune up a car. If I'm fixing cars, it might take one hour to four hours. It might take all day to fix a car. I need to think through the process of, boy, do I narrow my niche a little bit? Do I say, well, I'm only doing tune-ups and oil changes, or am I doing exhaust systems and brakes? Am I changing camshafts? Am I doing valve jobs? Am I completely tearing down engines? All those things are important, and then pick some averages. Okay, well, let's say I've got to uh, pull a transmission and fix a transmission, one car a day on average, and then I'm going to do, I'll, that'll leave me uh, three hours every day to do tune-ups. So I can see four customers a day. Well, I know that a transmission job on average uh, brings in $400, and I know that a tune-up brings in $100, so I'm making $700 a day. Can I afford that? Now, I, I figure out this sales forecast so that I can then figure out, well, what are the bills associated with that? If I've got to buy X number of you know, transmission jacks, and I've got to have $1,000 in tools to do the tune-ups, and I've got to have an engine analyzer, which is $1,500, and I've got to pay you know, my monthly payments on all that equipment are $300, how many cars do I need to fix a day? This is why you do a sales forecast. Right? Now, they're not difficult to do. They're simple add addition and subtraction and multiplication, but you need to figure this out, mostly because what happens when you start a business is if you're not selling, and let's say you don't hit your sales goal for the day, you know that tomorrow you've got more to sell than you had to sell the day before. So you've got to start working on strategies right away. And so it's a nice benchmark. It tells us where we are in our process. Very, very important, very easy to do. Right? And again, everything in business costs something. So we know that while we're selling something, it's also costing us to sell that. It cost us for the raw materials. It cost us to market that. It cost us to buy the tools that helped us produce that. So again, here is the raw data that says, here's how much I can legitimately do in a day. If I'm mowing lawns, I can only physically mow so many lawns in a day. How many can I do? Is that enough? Does this justify the amount of money that I'm putting in this business. Is it ever going to generate a wage for me? Or if I can only mow one lawn a day, can I charge enough to cover the cost of my equipment and make a living? Okay? Be reasonable and explain the projections briefly in the plan. It's a plan. Nobody expects you to be able to prove this. right? Um, what you're doing is you're working towards justification, not proof. Um, and again, take seasonal and personal fluctuations into account. A lot of times, uh, we're starting a seasonal business that eventually grows into something you know, greater. One of the reasons why I've been using the lawn mowing business is that it's very much a seasonable business, a seasonal business, but we shouldn't overlook seasonal businesses. Those are important. Those teach people about running a business. And some seasonal businesses make enough money so that you can kind of coast a little bit in the winter. But it also gets us thinking about, well, what are complementary businesses? Well, obviously, snow removal, uh, fall cleanup, um, something else that uses similar kinds of equipment. Somebody uh, that I was actually talking to yesterday about a power scrubbing business, uh, that they have a power washer, and they're cleaning cars with it. 
But what happens maybe in the winter when people aren't cleaning their cars as often? Well, maybe that's a good time to be power cleaning boats, right? This is a coastal community and people have their boats out of the water. It would be a great time to bring a boat by or go by with your portable power steamer and steam those boats clean so they're ready for the spring when you, when you go back into the ocean. So again, think through the process, think about your sales and how you're going to do that. Okay, and then once you're done with that, uh, again, use the template or another sales forecast that you've got off the website, um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about budget development a little bit.